Hello everyone. Today I wanted to talk about a section of the Criterion channel that uh, premiered in June 2021 and that is entitled Bad Spaniard 11 Scathing Satires by Luis Garcia Berlanga. Berlanga, a director I'd never heard of before. Uh, I fell for him hook, line, and sinker and watched all 11 uh, of, the, of these films on the Criterion channel in a matter of two weeks. He makes comedies. I love to laugh. Um, he is, uh, th there's just the joy of discovering uh, a comic talent, especially a comic talent that I've never seen before. Uh, his career uh, kind of mirrored uh, chronologically uh, Federico Fellini and some of the films we see, some Fellini movies, um, it said that he and his generation, Berlanga and his generation, were, were uh, influenced by neorealism. Uh, as far as Fellini goes, I see a good bit of um, Fellini's first three films, uh, um, Variety Lights, The White Cheek, and Ivy Toloni, but especially The White Cheek. This is, a, if you like Fellini's The White Cheek, uh, that type of humor, I think you're gonna like uh, Berlanga because uh, they are very much, uh, Berlanga's movies are very much satires of uh, kind of the delusions that uh, people decide to live by and how some of these delusions uh, can lead them to some very odd and uh, uh, in, in some more perplexing ways. And, and Berlanga also um, uh, borrows some of Fellini's actors, uh, Franco Fabrizi from Ivy Vitaloni, Valentina Cortese, uh, Richard Basar, who was Cortese's uh, husband at that time and uh, in a subsequent Berlanga movie. Uh, um, and of course, Basar was in two of uh, Fellini's most famous films. Um, and also Edmund Gwen, Chris Kringle himself, <laughs> turns up with uh, uh, being voiced by a very old, gruff uh, Spanish actor. Uh, his first, for Berlanga's first five films are about um, uh, small towns, uh, uh, all the, the class structure that's tottering, the absence of money. Uh, there's lots of people in, in these movies, and, and, and Berlanga gives everybody, uh, no matter how small a role uh, he or she might have, they all get a little bit of, of something that, uh, that's significant and that uh, separates them from other people. They're all comic types, to be sure. Uh, these are all pretty, very funny movies. Uh, the last of these is a movie called Placido, <clears throat> which is uh, Belonga's Christmas movie, and it has some some shades of uh, It's a Wonderful Life. Um, uh, Belonga, however, is, does, has none of Frank Capra's sentimentality, and one of the uh, hallmarks of Belonga's comedy is it's not sentimental. It's not sentimental in the least. <laughs> His next three films... In this selection, Berlanga actually made 17 films, and this is just 11 of them. Uh, it starts off with The Executioner, and this is on the criteri in the Criterion Collection. And this starred Nino Manfredi, another Italian actor. I don't think he was ever in a Fellini movie, but he was sort of because he actually um, voiced Franco Fabrizi, the Fausto from uh, uh, Ivan Toloni. And uh, you know, Manfredi is an absolutely fantastic actor, and, and he's great in this part, The Executioner. All three of these films, The Executioner, La Boutique, and Long Live the Bride and Groom, uh, don't center so much on community as it, as it does on an individual, a man who is being manipulated by forces he out of control to do things that he really doesn't want to do. So in The Executioner, uh, it has a great premise in that... Um, Neil Manfredi is, is working uh, for an undertaker, and though he's a good-looking guy, that whenever his girlfriends find out he's an undertaker, uh, they drop him, and and he and a co-worker pick up a body at the um, at, at a prison, uh, somebody who has been uh, um, garroted. Uh, that was uh, Franco Generalissimo Franco's uh, preferred way of capital punishment. <clears throat> they pick up a body. He sort of gets uh, manipulated into uh, going to the house of this executioner, who, and he has a very good-looking daughter, but again, whenever a boyfriend finds out that she's the daughter of a state executioner, uh, she's dropped. So there's a, a romance, a, a legit romance develops, but as it goes on, Manfredi is 
uh, is uh, being manipulated into becoming the successor of what is his father-in-law's profession against his will. <clears throat> Lots of comedy in there. Uh, and, uh, and, and again, these, these three films are, are a bit more centered. The Executioner, I can understand why that one is the one that is on the Criterion Collection, in the, in the collection, because it's really the definition of the well-made film. I think some of, other, uh, some of the other Berlanga films are so anarchic that, uh, you know, whether it's, it, it can correspond to the conventional checklist of what makes a well-made film, it, 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 it probably fails that way. Uh, I'm gonna. Well, I think every Berlanga film that I saw, that I saw of these eleven, they all deserve uh, 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 attention out to themselves, video to themselves. But again, they're not available only on the Criterion Channel. As far as I can tell, The Executioner is the only uh, Berlanga film that's available uh, in English. There are Spanish uh, uh, editions of his releases, uh, the, the Region B and. The ones I've been able to spot don't or do not include English uh, subtitles, at least as far as I can tell. <clears throat> and I mentioned Franco, and certainly Franco looms big over uh, Berlanga's career, the censorship, and in fact, the the uh, the name of this group of films, Bad Spaniard, is I think Bad Spaniard is what Franco felt that Berlanga was that he was anti-Spain, of course, in that kind of reactionary nationalistic. Uh, kind of uh, uh, society that that Franco presided over, uh, any any um, any criticism or uh, any, even the comical criticism is really could be seen as anti-Spain. And then we come to his the last three films, and the, and I'll skip to the last one, which was his, belonged as penultimate one, <clears throat> because uh, there there was one more film, that, and that is. Anar pure anarchy, and it, it's funny, and now Franco has fallen, uh, but there doesn't seem to be, there. There's society seems now to be in total chaos. Um, everybody who's not a Francoite uh, is, is, is a communist or considered a communist, the rich are, uh, the, no one, everybody's worried about money. The government is taxing people, uh, and, and but they never seem to have enough money to pay anybody. <laughs> Uh, who, who has contracts with the government, which is the linchpin of this, but the, then actually the, the linchpin of this narrative of this penultimate Berlanga film is former political prisoners of the General Alissimo are invited to a reunion, and they hold this reunion in a prison where political prisoners of the General Alissimo were held and tortured and, and, and killed. Uh, so it's, it's a bizarre situation. The uh, two films that precede this chronologically in this are, are, my, are probably my favorite. I mean, they're just absolute uh, hilarious satires of uh, Spanish life. Uh, you know, I, I guess one of the reasons that Berlanga doesn't get any English uh, uh, attention in, 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 uh, from uh, English language uh, boutique labels is because he's thought to be too Spanish. but. To me, and I'm sure there's many, many references to uh, both the times of Franco and the post-Franco era that, that I don't get, but laughter is universal, and, 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 and uh, Berlanga's style of comedy, comedy della art, is, is, it seems classical to me. Uh, so he made this trilogy of the aristocracy that was uh, in exile. They were royalists, uh, they were loyal to the king, who I believe was in exile during, also in exile during Franco's uh, long regime. And when he, when he Franco dies, the, the royalty comes back. And this trilogy is about a marquis who comes back to, in the second, uh, uh, in the second uh, uh, part of this three-part trilogy, uh, he comes back to Madrid, and it's just it's to his mansion that somehow in the middle of bustling downtown Madrid, his estranged wife is living there. Uh, there's so many comical situations. It's almost like a Marx Brothers movie. <laughs> I, I really don't even know how, how to describe it. And uh, so it, uh, Criterion has Patrim Patrimonio Nacional, which is the part two, and Nacional three. And, and, but for some reason, I guess they couldn't get the rights. They don't have the first of the trilogy. But if this ever comes out in the U.S. On, uh, or in English, in an English 
language-friendly edition. <laughs> this is the one I think they should really do. All these films are good. And, and I, I neglected to mention that the black and white films, before he went to color, I think uh, he didn't go to color, I think, till, till this trilogy. But they, they're in fantastic shape. I don't even have to do restorations. They look so good on the Criterion channel. But the, the uh, Marquis, the, the man who plays the Marquis in this trilogy, I got him, I mean, his name unknown to me and probably the most of you, but I got to give him a shout out. Anyways, his name is Luis Escobar, and he is fantastic. He's in his 70s. He presides over this, uh, over this family, uh, you know, it's just family anarchy, social anarchy. <laughs> he tries to adopt. Uh, he, he's, he's really uh, clever. He's saddled with an idiot son. <laughs> and, uh, and Escobar, and when I looked up Escobar, uh, he had such a regal bearing, you know, so that made it even more funny. And uh, he actually looks like a marquee. And in fact, he actually was a marquee in real life, uh, which really uh, adds to the, uh, the humor of the situation. Some say Rolanga's humor is bleak. There's no... There's no goodness here, and, but I don't know. I, I, I think um, uh, underneath all this, uh, all this scathing satires of people, I, I think Berlanga likes these people. <laughs> and I, he certainly made me, he made me like them. And he gets such great performances. He uses a lot of uh, Spanish uh, theater actors. They're like a stock company. You see uh, actors in the early films also come back in the trilogy and even in this uh, prison movie. Uh, so even though uh, if, if anybody knows of any English language friendly editions outside of the executioner, which I'll be picking up in the Barnes and Noble sale, uh, which I think starts in a, a week or so in July 2nd in the U.S., uh, if you know any, just uh, I would appreciate some comments. And I know that if you don't have the criteria in jail, this this video probably isn't that meaningful. But I, I just I was so enthusiastic uh, for Berlanga and his movies. The actors in his movies, uh, the uh, hilarious humor in his movies that I just had to make a video about it anyways. <laughs> so anyways, um, thanks a lot for listening. As always, comments are welcome. You guys take care. Catch you next time.